Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, thanks for being here. I hope that you enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up, plus the subscribe button, and come back for other videos that I do. I have been on this channel for a couple of years just making videos, talking about books, mostly from the perspective of is it clean, is it worth reading, and I really enjoyed just being able to talk to you guys about um, the books that I've read. This is going to be a recap video of the last month of reading, which would be um, February of 2024. And I usually do these monthly recaps, and it's kind of depressing sometimes, kind of encouraging uh, at other times, because I realize like how much I've read in the last month or how little I've read. So for this February in particular, I did not do a great job at reading, and it's kind of depressing to look at my stats, but it is encouraging me to do better in the month of March. <laughs> So for today, we're going to talk about four books that I read. Two of them were audiobooks, and two of them were um, like print books that I read. So these four books were 1,613 pages, so not a terrible page count, but still I wish I would have read more. And a lot of it is that I did finish two books right after March started, and I thought about including them in this recap, but I decided not to do that. Without further ado, let's get into the four books that I read in February of 2024. So first, a book that I listened to was Count the Nights by Stars, and this book is by Michelle Shockley. I've never heard of this author before, I don't know much about this book, and I just saw it on a Facebook group. A lot of people were saying it was an amazing book. Apparently, it won the 2023 Christianity Today Book of the Year Award. Um, so I decided to listen to it on my library app, and it has a really pretty cover, and I just, I, I don't know, the title has a cool ring to it, so I decided to try it. It's, um... A dual timeline story, which I don't normally like, and it is particularly hard whenever you're listening to it because it's kind of hard to tell when it switches between voices. Um, this book was good enough to where it was okay to read, but it's basically the story of a girl who lives in a hotel, and her mother has died, and she's taking care of her special needs brother, and then one of the guests has a stroke, I believe, and she's in the hospital, don't know if she's going to recover, um, and so this girl starts going through this old woman's room and finds a scrapbook and starts to unravel this woman's past. And then the other timeline is that same woman as a young girl during the Tennessee uh, Centennial Exhibition, very similar to the Chicago World's Fair, and just seeing what happened in this lady's background. It really reminded me of a fiction version of The Devil in the White City because The Devil in the White City is about the Chicago World's Fair and about a... Um, evil man who was kidnapping people throughout the World's Fair, and that's kind of the storyline that this book takes. And so the main topic of the book is girls going missing and ultimately being found working as prostitutes, and um, then the one of the main characters ends up um, going, one of the main characters ends up going to save these girls and so it kind of starts a ministry with that so that is a topic of the book. However, it does not go into detail on anything. It hardly even mentions like what they were wearing. I think there was like one time and I would not say that it was even like PG-13. It just mentions that it is a thing and I think it was very delicately dealt with. Um, I think my favorite part of the book really was Emmett, the brother who has special needs, and it was really see sweet just to see the main character taking care of him and um, there was just one scene where I really felt like crying just as like the family is coming to terms with this baby who was born and, you know, isn't what they expected him to be, but then they grow to love him, and it was just such a sweet scene. I really enjoyed it. Um, for the Christianity aspect, I felt like there was a couple parts that did have really great Christianity, but the majority of the book was really lacking in that, and it didn't really impact the way that they were living their lives, so I wouldn't consider it as, like, a top Christian fiction book. So overall, I gave it four stars. Even though there is some content in it, I felt like it was well done, and it was just a really enjoyable story to me. Then I also listened to Catherine the Great by Robert Massey. Um, my dad has had this book in his library for a long time, so I was able to get it to use in this video. Um, and it seems like a very large book, but whenever you listen to it, it goes by kind of fast. Honestly, I did not enjoy this book at all. I only ended up giving it three stars. It is about Catherine the Great, Empress of Russia. And I didn't know anything about her going into this. I was kind of hoping for a Queen Victoria story and maybe like someone who um, just was admirable, had a great marriage, but that is definitely not who Catherine the Great was. And so I did not expect that. And as I was rating this book, I was thinking, you know, with biographies, you can't really rate the book based off of the person's life. Of course, you can leave out um, certain detailed details, but 
if the person just lived a terrible life, you can't really blame the biographer for that, right? So even though I was hoping for just a really interesting story of a wonderful, powerful woman um, based off of the description of the book, this is not what I got. And I would have given this book a higher rating regardless of who Catherine was, except for I feel like the emphasis of the book just wasn't what it should have been. And um, there it was a very confusing timeline. And I saw other reviewers say the same thing because I'm for sure not an expert on biographies. And so I wouldn't necessarily rate how well a bi biography was written. Um, but I do feel like my thoughts were backed up by other people who are well read in biographies. The thing that I should have taken away from this book based off of the description and what I was expecting was that Catherine was the smart, educated, capable ruler who deserved the title of great. Um, and that is something that I think is well accepted, that she is a great and people say that she did a lot of great things for Russia. However, that was not emphasized in the book at all. What was emphasized throughout the entire book, but particularly in the first third, was that she had 12 partners in the course of her life, not including her husband, who um, didn't really count as her partner for the first nine years of their marriage. So that was a huge focus of the book. She really liked Voltaire. That was also well emphasized. The French Revolution did happen during her time and there was a lot of things that went on because of that. And also, uh, did I mention her 12 partners? Because that was really what the book was about. So I would not necessarily recommend this book. Um, and there was just a lot of backstory. Like every time that he would talk about like a new person who would come into Catherine's life, he would give the whole backstory on like their country and their life. And it was really confusing because you're at this point in the timeline and then you have to jump way back and then pull up to that point and um, it, it made for kind of a boring story. Then I read When Twilight Breaks by Sarah Sundin. Um, this is my second Sarah Sundin that I've read and I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. This is about um, a newspaper correspondent in Munich, Germany. It, it is a little bit feminist just because she's trying to be just as good as the men and be accepted and all of that, um, but it wasn't too overwhelming in here. And then she falls in love with this American graduate student who is working in Germany. Um, I found that really fascinating. Uh, Peter Lang, he works on how to get Americans to have an authentic German accent and how to get Germans to have an authentic American accent and talks about the different um, like ways that you shape your mouth and that you say certain vowels and how that is what gives you an accent. And that is something that I've thought about a ton since reading this book and I feel like I really learned from this. So I thought that was really cool. And it was based off of real research that someone did. So obviously when you read Sarah Sundin, it's not Rita Sapitas, it's not Steve Schenken, it's it's not like at that amazing level of historical fiction. But I do just like the way that she writes these books and that the characters are really memorable and you do feel like you learn something about either country or some historical thing that was happening. It was really interesting learning about pre-World War II Germany and I've actually taught this to a lot of people since I read this book about how whenever Hitler came in um, everyone saw him as such a good guy even like the Americans who were there because he cleaned up the mess that communists had caused so when communism came in everyone was poor there was just people on the streets it was really terrible and then Hitler came in and just cleaned it all up and it seemed like everything was going really well of course all those people that he got off the streets he just threw them all in prison um, and obviously it comes out in World War II that it wasn't all that great that was really interesting just seeing that perspective of someone being in Germany at the time and seeing that build up to World War II. And the love story in here was really sweet. I, Like I said, there was a little bit of feminism. I feel like they ended up loving each other pretty well in the end and it all turned out. I will say that in the last like quarter it gets a little bit too romantic and there's some more like suggestive comments but um, definitely nothing explicit or terribly bad in there. Um, and I loved, as you can see with all my tabs, that the faith content was so heavy in here. There was so much prayer and just like references to Christianity and it just actually impacting their lives and not being like a side story. So I just really loved that and really appreciated um, reading a, a Christian fiction book that truly felt Christian, but it wasn't like silly and felt forced. Like it felt like it truly fit in there and at least once a chapter there was some kind of prayer or something. So I really appreciate what Sarah Sundin did in this book and look forward to reading more of her books. And then the last book I read was one I read with my brothers, Mooses with Bazookas and Other Stories, Children Should Never Read by S.D. Smith. I did a video with this, the last video I posted on my channel, so go check that out for a full review of this. But I ended up giving it five stars and would highly recommend if you have any children, especially young boys who like humorous books, this is a great book to go pick up. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always check out the links in the description below for links to my Goodreads, my Instagram, my Etsy shop, some discounts to different places and links to all the different books that I mentioned in this video. I always link everything that I talk about so if you guys check out those links hopefully that'll be helpful to you and it's also helpful to me. So if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and come back next week for more. Bye!